everyone. Welcome back. Our first presentation this afternoon is Dr. Sarah Robb's workshop. And the bonus is a live question and answer with Sarah straight from her presentation. I'd like to thank the National Honey Show for their sponsorship for this presentation. And so, as you're all waiting, over to Sarah's kitchen, where she's going to show us how to make cosmetics. Hello, beekeepers. Welcome to Kitchen Cosmetics. My name is Dr. Sarah Robb, and this year we're going to be making two products. We're going to be making a honey poppy seed soap, and this is fragranced with lemongrass and tangerine. And we're also going to be making a honey calendula sugar scrub, and that has lavender essential oil, calendula petals, and sweet orange essential oil. Um, I'm very sad that we're not going to see each other in person this year, but I'm very pleased that you decided to watch my demonstration video. Um, I would also like to say that if anyone is interested in any of my books, they're available on the Northern Bee Book Stand in the Trade Hall, if you would like to have a look at those. So let's get making. So now I'd like to show you how to make honey poppy seed soap. And this is the finished product here. And I'm going to try to show you how to do the design on the top um, using some bubble wrap, something that most people will have in their house. So it's a way to reuse the bubble wrap. Now this soap um, is made with coconut oil. And so I have 525 grams of coconut oil here. That's going to make the soap nice and bubbly. Uh, we're also using, um, this is olive pumice oil, 263 grams of olive pumice oil. I have 150 grams of castor oil here, and in front of that, I have 40 grams of beeswax. So before I get mixing and making, um, I need to put on my gloves and my beautiful goggles. Um, I've been really looking for a pair that have, uh, have some gemstones or something on them because that would be much more fun. Um, so I'll get these on. And my beautiful goggles. So I have my protective, personal protective equipment on. Um, what I'm going to do first is I am going to add my beeswax to the coconut oil because I need to melt the solids in order to be able to mix them with the liquids when I'm making the soap. So I'm just going to take these over, put it in the microwave and, and let the solid oils melt. Um, and then I'll be back and we'll continue. Okay, this is melted nicely. So I'll just take this out of the microwave. And you can see there are a few little bits of beeswax still floating, and that's fine. And it's also starting to solidify a little bit on the side, so I'll just stir this a bit. I'm not heating it to get it to any specific temperature. I'm only heating it to melt the solid beeswax and coconut oil. And to this now, um, I am going to add my other oils. So I have my, my olive oil, and I'll add that. And my castor oil. Now, because I'm making same-day soap, and the soap will be ready today. Um, I'm using a little less water in the sodium hydroxide solution. And so I'm going to add all of the ingredients to the oil um, rather than waiting to trace and add the ingredients then. So next, I want to get ready um, my, my color. And I'm using some titanium dioxide and some yellow pigment. So I have two grams of titanium dioxide and one gram of the yellow pigment. And this is a little formulator's tip. If you dissolve your pigments in some water before you add 
to the soap, you can avoid having lumps of pigment. So I'm just going to dissolve, um, dissolve my colors in a little bit of water. So I think just about a tablespoon or about 15 mils. And I'll just give this a mix. See, it's quite a bright color, um, but I want to try and get rid of any of these lumps that are in here. And it will also, when I mix the soap, any, any small lumps will also go away then, but this, this helps tremendously. So I'll just go ahead and pour in my color. Okay, so that's to give the, the soap a nice yellow color. Um, now, I also want to add some um, essential oils to this, and I'm using lemongrass and tangerine today, and this is a fantastic spring smell. So this is a really moisturizing soap um, when it's finished, and the aroma is, is very, very sunny and um, is perfect for, for spring. So I'm adding... Um, five grams of lemongrass essential oil. And I'm going to add five grams of tangerine and the tangerine is really lovely. So I got these essential oils from Fresh Oli and they have really, really high quality um, fragrances and essential oils. So I'll go ahead and put that in. So five grams of tangerine as well. Um, I want to add some honey, but because I want the soap to have a nice yellow color, rather than it going golden or brown, I'm not going to add too much honey to this recipe. So I'm going to add a, a two grams of honey. And so I have my, I have my Dartford honey here, um, and I'm going to add two grams of that. There we go. And you can use your own honey. I mean, that's the best thing about being a beekeeper is that you can use your own honey. Um, so I'm just adding this. And if one of my girls were here, probably Maggie would love to lick the spoon, uh, but she isn't here today. She went back to school, I think, as they all did. Um, so I'll put this back. All right, so I'm going to add some poppy seeds. Not very much because we don't want um, the soap to be overly exfoliating. So I'll just add some poppy seeds and I'm going to put um, put that in as well before we add the sodium hydroxide. So right now everything is in the bowl with the exception of the lye solution and I just want to mix this together and then we'll be almost ready to make the soap. So I have my mixer here. And you can see this is a really bright color and I wish you could smell the aroma. It smells so nice, um, so sunny. Okay, now before I add my sodium hydroxide, I just want to mention a few things. You can see that I have my gloves and my goggles on and this is to protect me um, while I'm using the sodium hydroxide. So I have my lye solution here that I made earlier and I made this in this Pyrex jug. It can withstand the heat. There's extra volume at the top. So you want to use something like this or perhaps something like an old Nescafe coffee jar, something very thick and heavy. Um, try and stay away from using plastic because if you have a plastic jug that you're using and it's not heat safe, it could melt and it would be very dangerous. So we want to make sure that we're using something very heavy when we mix this. And the way that I make the lye solution is I add the water first and it's 255 grams of water. And then um, I, in a smaller bowl, will weigh 
the sodium hydroxide. And the sodium hydroxide that you want to use needs to be 98% pure. So look on the bottle and make sure that it says 98% sodium hydroxide. It might be called caustic soda when you go to the shop to buy it. Um, but do look at the ingredients. It should just say 98% sodium hydroxide. So I weigh the sodium hydroxide and it's 144 grams into a, a small bowl and then carefully add that to the water, stir it and just until it's in suspension and put that to the side away from pets and children. Also read the safety instructions um, and the warnings on the sodium hydroxide bottle. But I did that earlier, so it's all ready to go. Um, as the sodium hydroxide dissolves, it will get hot. It can get um, as hot as 90 degrees. So you want to have this extra space. You want to use cold water. Um, but mine's all ready to go. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add the sodium hydroxide to my oils and start to mix. And you'll see that it goes very, very quickly. Um, it's much better if you use um, a hand blender or a stick mixer because if you try to stir by hand, you will be mixing for quite a long time. Um, you might be stirring for 20 minutes. And you'll see that once I start mixing, this is going to go very, very quickly. Um, I also have, this is a silicon dish that I have here. I'm going to use this. This is a, a soap loaf pan. And so I'm going to pour the soap into this. And as I mentioned before, I'm going to put some bubble wrap on the top after I poured it in. And that is going to give us this appearance here. Um, and I think I may try to do something different. I did this with a fork but I think today I'm going to try and just make a few um, little wave-like shapes and then put the bubble wrap on. So, so we'll see, but you can do whatever you want. You don't have to put the bubble wrap on the top. You could put the bubble wrap over the whole thing if you wanted. Um, it really is uh, just an added feature and the soap is just as nice without that. So, Okay, so let's get, get making the soap here. Um, you can see that some of the beeswax is still solidifying a little bit, but um, that's fine. And we have our honey mixed in and our fragrances and our beautiful color. Now, what I want to do is I'm going to carefully pour the sodium hydroxide solution in and I'm not going to mix with the stick mixer. I want to be very careful so that it doesn't splash. And so I'll just stir a little bit by hand as I, as I pour this in. And what you will see is um, not much happening right now. But as soon as I start using the other mixer, you will see the soap and the glycerin will start to form. The chemical reaction will begin to happen. And so I'll just put this here and... And I think you can see that it's already thickening and you can see the color is changing slightly as well. So what I want to do is get this to about the thickness of cake batter. We don't want it to be super thick. We want it to be just about batter like. And I have a few bubbles on the top, but that's fine. Um, I think one more little mix and that's it. Okay. I think that's thick enough now. So I'll just put this here and I'm going to pour the, the soap mixture into the, the soap pan. Then the color will change slightly. Get this in and then what I want to do is try to do something decorative on the top. That's not my, my strong point, but uh, we'll see what we can do. So, all right, so I'm going to try to put um, some 
some swirls on the top of the soap, maybe a few little waves. And just do like that, just to make it a little more interesting. And then I'm going to put the, the bubble wrap on to make it look like it has a So make it look like it's honeycomb on the top. And so I've just take the bubble wrap and I'm just going to set this in like that. And just press this down a little bit, very gently. And that will give the illusion that it's honeycomb on the top. And I think I'll just sprinkle a few uh, poppy seeds on the top as well, not too many, but just a few. And every one soap will, will turn out differently. And each time I make it, I think it turns out slightly different. So, um, okay. So I think that I'm happy with that. So now I'm going to cover my soap with some cling film. I'm going to wrap it up like a little baby. Um, I'm using an old towel to keep it warm. I want to keep the heat in so that the chemical reaction can process. Um, and I'll just put that to the side and leave that. Um, and we'll check on our soap later. So let me just get some cling film. So I think if I just put this here and move the soap. And that's good enough. And now I'm going to wrap a towel around it to keep it warm. Use one of your old towels. Um, so we want to keep this nice and warm like a little baby. All right, and now I'll just take this into the other room and we'll leave that to process. Now I'd like to show you how to make a calendula honey sugar scrub. And this is so, so refreshing, perfect for spring and summer. This is one that I made earlier and you can see that um, it's got the sugar and the honey and it has calendula petals in it. And we are going to add some lavender and some orange, sweet orange essential oil to this. And this is really easy to make. Um, I have some containers here from Freeman and Harding and you can visit them in the trade hall. I decided to put the sugar scrub in a little glass ointment jar and so that's what we'll be doing today. I also have this little clip top jar that is really quite sweet and if you needed to give um, party favors the sugar scrub might be quite a nice party favor in a little jar like this. Um, but very easy to make and fantastic to use. So I have my ingredients here and the first thing in the Red Bull, this is sugar. Um, this is granulated sugar. Uh, if you use caster sugar, it's finer and so it won't be as exfoliating. I quite like the granulated sugar. Um, also, we're going to be um, be mixing it um, slightly at the end to kind of emulsify it a little bit. And so um, the, the sugar crystals will break a little bit there. So granulated sugar is quite good. Um, I'm going to be using rapeseed oil as the oil in the sugar scrub. And I chose rapeseed oil because it's very emollient. It's quite moisturizing but I wanted not to use a nut oil because many people have nut allergies. So um, that's why I selected rapeseed oil. I also have uh, some cocoa butter and these are little cocoa butter chips and these smell just like chocolate. You can use uh, refined cocoa butter if you want. I quite like the chocolate aroma that this adds to the sugar scrub. So 
um, I have that. And then I have subtle alcohol, and this is to make the oil thicker. Um, and so these little, little white beads are subtle alcohol. I mentioned that I'm going to be using both lavender and um, sweet orange essential oil. So I have those here and I'll be adding that. Additionally, I'm going to add some vitamin E so that the sugar scrub has some antioxidants in it. I'm going to add some lovely honey, which will add emollient properties. It's humectant um, and really, really makes this a treat to use. So I have the honey here. Um, finally, I'm going to add just a little bit of a preservative. While this is a non-aqueous product and it doesn't need to have a preservative, because we're going to be using this in the bathroom and maybe splashing some water into the container, um, we'll just add a little just in case. Um, and so we have some phenoxyethanol for that. So the first thing I need to do is I want to put the rapeseed oil and the cocoa butter and settle alcohol into this Pyrex jug. And I'm going to melt um, the settle alcohol and the cocoa butter. So I'm just going to, to put this in the microwave to do that. And so these will thicken the oil a little bit and make it less runny. Um, the final product will be a bit thicker with, the, with these ingredients. So I'll just take this to the microwave right now. You can see um, there's quite a bit of solid in there. We'll put this in for a few minutes. You could do this on the stove if you wanted. Um, for a demonstration, it's sometimes easier to use a microwave. But um, So we'll just put this in and we're just trying to melt those. Okay, that's all melted. So bring that back to the table. So in my jug, I have got 85 grams of rapeseed oil, 10 grams of settle alcohol, eight and a half grams of cocoa butter, and I've heated this to melt the cocoa butter and the settle alcohol. And I'm just going to mix that, um, and that's, that's now completely melted. And to this, I'm going to add some of my other ingredients. I want to add eight and a half grams of honey. I would use a scale if I weren't doing this as a demonstration, but, um, okay, so there is our honey. We're going to add one and a half grams of vitamin E. I'm also going to add one and a half grams of each of my essential oils. So this is my lavender essential oil. So this will be very relaxing. And then finally, the sweet orange essential oil. And I think sweet orange is kind of a spring, summer type fragrance. And lavenders, the bees are out, and so probably looking for the lavender, which is lovely. And then I'm just going to mix this and incorporate all the ingredients. And the honey may not uh, suspend completely in the oil, but that's fine. We are going to continue to mix it, and when we put the sugar in, um, it, will, it will completely mix together. The final ingredient I want to add is I want to add um, one, one gram of phenoxyethanol as a preservative. Okay. So that is all the liquid ingredients. And to this, this is very easy to do. I'm just going to add my calendula petals and I'm going to add my sugar. 
So go ahead and um, this is 175 grams of granulated sugar. And this is um, about half a gram of calendula. It's about a teaspoon. And I'll put that in. You don't want too many. And I'm going to save a little bit to put on the top um, because I think that looks quite pretty. So what I want to do now is I just want to let this cool a little bit because it's still very warm and then I'm going to use a mixer and I'm going to just whip it a little bit. So I'm just going to leave this for a few minutes to cool. All right, so this is cooled now um, and what I want to do is just whip it a little bit and so I just have a mixer to the side and you can just use your kitchen mixer. And I have, I've just put one beater in because sometimes I make this in things that are narrower at the top. So I'll just take my spoon out for a minute. But you'll see it's going to make it kind of go more creamy white. So I'll just mix this uh, for a minute or two and then it'll be ready to go into um, the jars. my glass jar and I'm just going to go ahead and and you can scale up the recipe to make um, a number of jars of sugar scrub And then to the top, um, I'd like to add a, a few calendula petals because I think it looks quite pretty. And so we'll just put those on the top. And there we go. So I have the soap here. Um, it's been about an hour and a half since we poured it into the mold. So it's had time to process and cool enough that we can take it out of the mold and cut it into some bars. The first thing I'm going to do is take off the bubble wrap and then you'll be able to see the impression that looks like honeycomb. I'll tip that a little bit so that you can see that. And I'm going to take it out of the mold, just gently pull on the sides to try and release it. And then if I just turn it over, and it should, oh, it's coming quite nicely. Ah, there it is. Now it's still a little bit warm, but it is cool enough to cut. So I'll just turn it like this and I will show you how we cut a bar of soap. So this is, um, this is my soap cutter. I think it is actually to plaster the wall, scrape off wallpaper, something like that. But it works very well because it is a thin straight edge. Um, it doesn't need to be sharp. And a knife is a little bit too thick, especially if you wait till the soap has cooled completely. So something like a pastry scraper or something with a straight edge like this works very, very well. And so you'll, you'll see if we just go ahead and we can cut this into a few bars. And it's still warm, so it's quite soft and easy to cut. And there's a bar of soap. And let's cut one more. And remember that two hours ago, this was oil and sodium hydroxide, and now we have a beautiful soap 
And because um, I used my same day soap method, this soap can now be used. So you could go off and have a bath or a shower with this soap. It's all ready to use. I hope you enjoyed Kitchen Cosmetics today and the demonstrations making the honey poppy seed soap and the honey calendula sugar scrub. I hope you'll give these a try when you get home. Um, you should have the handout available with the, all the ingredients and the recipes. Additionally, if you enjoy making these and you are pleased with the formulations and would like to sell them, I have prepared a quick CPSR for each of these products. Now that we're at the end of the demonstration, there will be a live question and answer and I'll be available to answer the questions that you have. Thank you, Sarah. And uh, your first question, please can you explain what is pumice soil? Pumice oil is a type of olive oil. Um, it's similar to what um, virgin olive oil looks like. Um, it's quite moisturizing. It tends to be kind of a darker green color. Um, and it's, it's very nice in soap because it has very good moisturizing qualities. But you can find it if you, if you look for olive pumice oil. Right, and your second question is, could I use different oil, like olive or castor oil, instead of the rapeseed for that lovely scrub? Uh, uh, for the scrub, yes, you could. Um, you could try different, different oils. Um, you might want to experiment because I'm not sure that they would work exactly the same. Um, for instance, if you used um, a virgin olive oil, it might be a little salady with the um, with that in there. But uh, certainly uh, another one that you could try is sunflower oil substitutes very well for rapeseed oil. Thank you. Um, slightly different one. Given it's caustic, uh, sodium hydroxide, uh, how is it safe putting this onto the skin? Are there any health conditions that you shouldn't use it with? Uh, well, you never would put sodium hydroxide on your skin. Um, so sodium hydroxide is a starting ingredient in soap manufacture. You need two, um, two chemicals to produce soap. The first is um, some kind of an oil or a fat. So you need, um, for instance, we'll have olive oil. The second um, chemical that you need is you need caustic soda. And what happens is when you mix these two together, it's a chemical reaction called saponification and you end up making new products. You make soap and you make glycerin. And so there is no caustic soda in the soap um, and the oil is also um, converted into soap and glycerin too. So the starting materials, what you put in the bowl are not the same as what is in a bar of soap. Oh, thank you. Um, are there different legal requirements for selling hand cream and selling soap? Um, yes, there are. It depends on what you mean by hand cream. Now, some people would um, call something that is a non-aqueous cream, um, hand cream. Um, really, the difference is if, if it's an aqueous product. So if you're making an emulsion, if you're making a cream with let's say an emulsifying wax and oil and water, then there are differences. You would need to have um, what's called a, a challenge test. And what that is, is that is um, a laboratory test to make sure that your preservative in your cream is working. Um, and so that would be uh, an extra element that you would need to do in order to have um, go through the safety assessment of an aqueous cream. If it were a non-aqueous cream, then the process really isn't much different to lip balm or soap. Right, I've got another one which links with that a little. Do you need a food hygiene certificate or you know, for your kitchen, uh, or do you need it to be checked in any way if you're making cosmetic products um, to sell? No, you don't need to have a food hygiene certificate, but what you do need to do is 
follow good manufacturing practice. So um, there's an outline of what you need to do. I, I suppose this is very similar to when you make your honey. Um, so you would need to have a clean environment and you have to be able to, um, you would you know, need to make sure that you're weighing things correctly and that you're using um, the same ingredients consistently. So it's, it's not something that you would have an outsider come in, inspect, and you don't get a certificate or anything like that. And the next question we've got is, where can we get the ingredients? The pumice oil, uh, the castor oil, pigments, essential oils, sodium hydroxide, where do we actually manage to get it? Okay, well, actually, many of these things, um, this is very good for lockdown, you can get online. Um, two suppliers that I really like are Mystic Moments and Fresholi. Um, you can get the pumice oil, the castor oil, um, all of the oils from Mystic Moments, and Fresholi has lovely essential oils. Um, and then if you were to visit um, pretty much any soap making supply company, you probably can find your colors that you would want to use. Um, caustic soda is slightly different because some companies may not send it out because of the restrictions on shipping it. But now that lockdown is, is lifted, you can sometimes find it in boots or if you go to your chemist um, or the hardware store. But when you're buying it, it probably says caustic soda and look for 98% purity on the label. Thank you. Uh, one question, more question about um, actually how to deal with the soap. When wrapping the cling film, film round the soap, does it need to be airtight? No, not really. Um, the reason I put the cling film around the soap, um, really twofold, to keep the heat in and secondly, to keep the soap off of my towels. Um, really, that's it. And it, it doesn't need to be airtight, no. It's really more to just make a barrier um, so that you don't end up with the towel falling into the soap. So does wrapping the actual towel around the block help to prevent it cracking? Does it um, assist with that? Um, it doesn't have, I, I don't really um, know. It doesn't does it prevent the cracking. Um, I don't know what crack, what that's referring to, but um, what wrapping the soap in the blanket, you are keeping the heat in. And then as the chemical reaction is happening, more and more heat is generated and the soap will make so much heat from the chemical reaction that it will go through a gel phase. And this will go from the center to the edge. And when it has reached the edge, you know that the saponification has completed and that now you have soap and glycerin rather than caustic soda and oil. Um, so I'm not sure what the cracking references. Um, I'm not sure about that. Maybe not weighing the ingredients or something, but um, <laughs> uh, one other question I'd like, I'd like to ask is if I make soap, um, how long will it actually keep wrapped up? Can I start now on my Christmas presents? <laughs> oh, yes. Actually, um, I remember when I was a child, there was this little box and it was a tin candy box, a chocolate box. And inside this was this little strawberry soap from probably around 1900, 1910. And it had belonged to my great grandmother. Um, it didn't have any fragrance anymore, but it was perfectly formed and, you know, just lovely. And I'm sure if I had tried to use it, it would have been fine. Um, where you run into difficulties is if you have something like um, a dried orange slice on the top, you keep that in in something sealed, um, the orange slice could go moldy, but the soap itself really lasts almost forever. Um, I have soap that's very, very old and um, and it really is fine. It might lose a little scent, but, but if you were selling soap in general, um, we use a period after opening of about 12 months. Oh, thank you. That's really helpful. Um, your next question is about CPSR. Is it needed if the products are given away or, for example, in exchange for a donation for a charity? Um, it really, strictly speaking, yes. Um, but I think you do need to use some common sense. If you were giving your mother some soap or your friend, 
I think that, that really that's probably okay. You need to make sure that you check that they're not allergic to any of the ingredients. If you're giving it to a charity, I really, um, I wouldn't do that because that charity, if they were to sell it or to give it to someone else um, and you don't have the proper um, documentation and you don't have a CPSR and if someone were to sue you, you are liable. Um, and I, I think that, that that could be very bad. Is uh, the CPSR document easily available? Yeah, so um, I think that if you visited my trade stand, um, you could see that I'm able to prepare CPSRs and I do quick CPSRs for beekeepers where they can, within a matter of days, have a personalized CPSR for the calendula honey scrub or the lemon poppy seed soap. Um, and so I can write that for you. Or if you have been working on your own products, um, if you send those recipes to me, then I also can help you with that. And the other thing I do is I, I help bee beekeepers prepare their product information file. And this is a file that contains a, a number of documents that you legally need to have um, with your CPSR in order to sell soap. And I give beekeepers templates so they can easily make those. Thank you. And for a lovely soap, what does beeswax add to the soap? Ah, beeswax is um, really lovely in soap because it's film forming. So it kind of leaves a protective barrier on your skin. Um, beeswax doesn't saponify very easily. So it isn't a lot of the beeswax you put in is not converted into soap. It remains as beeswax. And so as you use it, you are applying a thin layer on your skin that can, that it can serve as a barrier to lock moisture in. And it smells fantastic. So <laughs> it's always important. Yes. It's always important. <laughs> uh, lye solution. Is it okay once you've used the solution to put the Pyrex dish in the dishwasher or just rinse it out? Do you keep utensils just for soap making? Is it not okay. food? Yeah, that's a very good question. Um, if you're if your Pyrex jug, I would rinse it out with some water and then yes, um, put it in the dishwasher. When you rinse it out, after you've rinsed it maybe twice, there really is no sodium hydroxide left in that. Um, it will just come off the glass. Put it in the dishwasher, that's fine. Um, I have some things that we that I use just for soap or for cosmetic making and other things that I would also use for food. So if it's a Pyrex bowl, it will completely rinse um, of and be wash free of all fragrance, um, any residues from the cosmetics. If, however, you were using something like a silicone baking tray to make your soap in, that will absorb fragrance and you really should dedicate that just for your, making your soap. So anything that is plastic or silicone will absorb the fragrance um, from the cosmetics or it will absorb the smells from food. Um, I remember I had this beautiful new um, silicone uh, square pan. I used it once to make lavender soap and Jasmine wanted me to make her, her some brownies for school. I thought I've only made soap once, rinsed it, rinsed it, rinsed it, and she ended up with lavender brownies. So those types of things, if you have a stick mixer with a plastic sheath um, on the, the length of it, that will absorb fragrances um, or, or food flavors. So yeah. Those types of things you do want to keep separately. A uh, question that's slightly linked in, um, what does one do to stop the soap losing its perfume? Uh, yes. So I think it, um, the amount of fragrance loss um, really kind of depends on what the fragrance is. Uh, some essential oils evaporate very quickly, fragrance oils. If you keep it in a sealed container, that will help. Um, once you take it out, you know, um, and have used it, you might notice that the aroma is not as strong on the surface of the soap, but maybe when you're using it in the bath and you're put it under the water and, and the fresh layer comes up, you will have more, more fragrance again. Um, but to store it, if you store it in something that's airtight, that would be good. Great. And a question about the um, poppy soap. 
what color would it be if you didn't add the pigment to it? If you didn't add the pigment, it would be kind of a creamy white color, um, depending on how much color the honey will give to the soap. So it won't be pure white, any honey soap, um, the Mallard reaction will occur. And so you will have um, a browning or a kind of a golden color, but because it doesn't have a lot of honey in, if you didn't put the, the yellow powder in, um, it, it would probably be kind of a creamy, very pale yellow or beige color. But that will differ. It depends on your honey. And so every everyone's honey is different. It depends on how much protein is in the honey. Oh, that would be nice. Yeah. Um, you said uh, grams for adding essential oil and vitamins, which are liquid. Um, what's the volume and concentration? Do you have any figures? For yes. That? So um, if you would need to know the density of each liquid um, in order to do that, um, if so for essential oils, the density of an essential oil is about 0.85 grams per milliliter. So um, I think I'd recommend you using um, using a small scale or if someone wants to email me, I can tell you how many drops it is. Um, but, um, you know, they do make some really nice little small scales um, as well. Um other than having ingredients on the label, are there any other legal requirements before selling soap? Yes. So I'm not sure if this is a question just about labeling or um, about selling soap in particular. So the first thing you need to do is you need to have um, a cosmetic product safety assessment, and I can do that for you. You also need to make a product information file or a PIF, and there are certain documents that need to go in that. Um, you need to put it on the UK submit a product portal. Um, and then after you've done that, you also need to label the soap correctly. And on the label, you need to have um, the ingredients in descending order in their inky name or international nomenclature for cosmetic ingredients. You need to have the, um, the weight, you need to have the, um, the, uh, use that period after opening your, you need the responsible person's name and address. So for me, it would be bath potions and my, and my address. If, if it's a person, it would be their name and address. Um, so there are a number of things that, that need to be on the label and that you need to do before you can sell soap. And I'd also recommend you get liability insurance. Thank you. Are there any restrictions on the actual size of the um, letters on the labels that you use when you're putting <sighs> the Oh dear. Um, I think, you know, you need to be able to read it. Um, I would have to check that. I know yeah. for honey labels, there's, they're yeah. very specific, um, you know, uh, but I, I think I would have to look that up. There probably are. Um, you couldn't make it tiny, but yeah, it has to be legible. Um, what would you suggest that someone makes for their first attempt at kitchen cosmetics? I'm hoping it's going to be what you actually demonstrated, but um, what's your advice? <laughs> well, I mean, very often I have people start with lip balms because it's just a mixture of usually three things, beeswax, a butter and an oil. But I really think that you, you could make um, the scrub quite easily. Um, I have to say, I write my recipes so that people can go back and they will be successful when they get home and they try to make them. I remember once I gave a soap making talk and did a demonstration at a bee club. And there was a girl in the audience and she was 16 and she just wrote down the ingredients and she went home and she made soap. Um, so I really think that if you if you follow all the instructions that you can you can do either one, but if you are worried, um, start with the scrub. Right, and those instructions are they on your handout? And I know you've got a lot of books being published, haven't you as well? Um, I know the uh, Northern Bee books. Haven't you just brought out a new one? Yes, I did. Sweet honey. 
Yeah. Make, yeah, um, it's, yeah, Sweet Orange Lip Balm Making and Selling Cosmetics. Yeah. And it tells you exactly what you need to do, all of the steps involved from making the cosmetic to selling the cosmetic and the legal steps involved. Um, but yes, the handouts are there and I try to um, be as specific as I can in the handouts. And if you have a question, contact me. If you don't understand something, um, I'm quite happy to clarify. I'm uh, got another question coming in just about the ingredients. I'm um, saying that's really great. Thank you for the talk. Um, what is limonene and citral, please? Okay, so I also included the what would be on the label of the product if you were going to sell it. And what you need to do is you need to declare any allergens that are in cosmetics above a certain threshold level. And so those uh, limalool and limonene though, and citral, those are allergens that are naturally present in essential oils and they need to be on the label just to indicate that they're, they're at a level that's high enough that it, it could be irritating um, to some people. And is there um, uh, an age lim limit that you actually suggest for using it? Uh, sorry, using the products? Yeah, I mean, would you use it with uh, somebody under 18 months, for, say, for example? Uh, yes, I don't. I, I think, um, well, I would be very careful they don't eat the sugar scrub, but <laughs> I don't see, you know, I think, um, yeah, I think that... Yeah. Uh, you need to use common sense, but yeah, I think it's fine. Um, I think three, you know, to be safe, maybe three and above for things with honey in it. But if you were supervising, um, I don't see that it would be too big of a, a problem. Certainly the soap can be used for any age. Right, well, can I just say thank you. All your advice has been absolutely superb. Your, your actual directions and um, demonstration has inspired me. I'm going to go away and start that soap making. I'm just thinking, will I lose a few swarms while I'm busy trying to make soap? <laughs> no, no, no. You can do it in the amount of time it takes to make a cake. It's a fantastic talk that you've given, so thank you oh, very thank much. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much.